Hey Stampers, Kim from StampingAndPerfection.com. Welcome to my craft room. I want to share another card and I decided that I, I don't want to stop playing with my Distress Crayons. And I need some thank you cards. And I have, um, Alta New has, and I forgot to grab the thank you one, but Alta New, Alta New has these mega greetings sets. They just came out with this one that, that has a gigantic love and a gigantic friend. And they have coordinating dies. So I thought it might be fun because the, there's one that's also thank you, and I forget what the other one was. Um, mega greetings one and two. So that, like this is the third in a series, and um, these are fantastic. Like you need a fabulous background and stamp this. And then they give you a, a bunch of secondary sentiments you can add if you want to, or you can die cut it and do something fabulous with the die cut. Um, and it just makes a spectacular card. Clean and simple and fun. And I do love playing with backgrounds. And what I thought I would do today is, and this is not this is something I have not tried, so if this doesn't work, I'm experimenting for you. So um, I pulled out two pieces. I decided to do this on watercolor paper, and I'm pulling out two pieces because I'm going to try a couple different stencils. I want to use my Distress Crayons with some texture paste. So I've got this Ranger texture paste and I actually have not used this brand before so I'm kinda looking forward to trying this. Now I'm going to tape down, I'll start by just taping down one of these and I pulled out a bunch of stencils because I was thinking I haven't used my stencils in a while and I'd like to try this with texture paste and I really like using um, stencils with the texture paste. So now I have cut this down at four and a quarter by five and a half. <coughs> Excuse me. So sorry, I'm getting over, um, and it's taking forever, the, the flu, and I had a flu shot, so, but all of my students have been sick and they've been out for like a week or a week and a half at a time, and then don't you know, I get it um, between the holidays, between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And it is just not going away. So I'm I'm using, I love this tape. This is Pro, it's called Pro Artist Tape. It, this is a one quarter inch wide. And I actually found this on Amazon and I really like it. For the most part, I haven't had any trouble with it peeling off the edges. I think I'm actually going to start with the Starburst because I have a student for whom this would be appropriate. So I am really enjoying playing with these distressed crayons, trying different techniques. And one of the things I love about Tim Holtz products, and this is going to sound ridiculous, but I love that he, he creates organizing tools for the products that he has. Like this makes it so easy to store them and then I can just put them on a shelf. I don't have to go find something to put them in, you know, that they fit and, you know, it just takes the work out of it and I love that they did that. Alright, so let's go here. So this is just texture paste. Now you could use anything here. Like I have a couple other brands. I do have the Stampin' Up one which I quite like. And, and I have this um, Cosmic Shimmer Sparkle Paste, which is already Silver Sparkle, which is pretty. Um, so, like, you know, you, you Stampin' Up! has a few. This is Silver. They have a Clear Sparkle or Shimmer one. I'm going to use this Texture Paste, just because I want to add some color to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop some of this out here. And oh, it's got an interesting odor. It does say acid-free, um, so I'm wondering if I can use this in my scrapbooks. Acid-free is always a good... And this is this says it dries clear with a transparent gloss. Now the hardest part of this technique for me is waiting for it to dry. So I, I really have a lot of trouble with that. So I'm going to take the peacock feathers 
I'm going to really scribble a generous amount and I'm going to run it around the edges and get off those big loose pieces. And then I'm just going to bring some texture paste over and just start mixing until I get it smooth. It's like frosting. It's a pretty color, this peacock feathers. And I'm going to squish some of these big chunks. Although I have to say I won't hate having chunks in there. Now if I add more paste it's going to lighten up the color a little so I may end up adding more color in because I kind of liked it dark. So now I'm going to take, this is from My Favorite Things by the way, and I'm not sure if the name of it is on here. Oh yeah, the name is actually on the stencil itself. Oh look, they even date it. How nice. Uh, this is Sunrise Radiating Rays. So I'm going to put this down on my paper. And um, one of the things I like to be able to do is to trim off the edges when I do a technique, a background technique. Now you don't have to fill the whole background with um, the stencil with the paste. Like you could just cover part of the stencil so it almost looks like like if you had a brick wall stencil. Actually I have a brick wall stencil. I should do that with this. You could just do like some of the bricks and make it look like a really cool background. Ooh, I just gave myself a great idea. Definitely trying that. And then how I do it is I just goop it on and um, one thing I do try to do is get it so it is not sticking above the stencil because I don't want it on there too thick. I don't know how this, I've never mailed a card with the paste on it, but um, the paste seems like I'm, you know, I don't know how it would make it through the mail. If you have mailed this kind of thing before, I would love to know how it went through the mail or what if you did anything special um, to before you mailed it. Okay, so I'm gonna put the, that aside, and I like doing this kind of technique on um, a board like this because I can just put this aside on the shelf next to me and it won't get bumped. So I've had these sitting on my desk for what seems like two weeks. I know it hasn't been that long, but um, I decided it's time to finish this project. And now, I did two of these. Here's why. When I first did this, after I put the embossing paste with the watercolor crayon on, I left the stencil on and put it aside to dry, but I don't know how well. Can you see this right here? When I removed the stencil, and it wasn't even quite dry, it tore the paper. So make sure you remove the stencil. As soon as you're done putting this stuff on, carefully remove the stencil. The result is so much nicer. And um, I really like the way that came out. And here's the brick one. I actually kind of like it. It's kind of cool. I sort of wish I'd used a creamier color watercolor paper, almost a vanilla maybe. So I haven't decided what I, I definitely think this needs some vines and a pot of flowers or something. So this one I'm going to be thinking about. about. But um, the beautiful thing about this is it's got this stuff on the edge. All I have to do is take my scissors and just slide them along like that and it trims right off. Like this stuff is like, it's amazing. It, like this was super fun to do and I could mix my own colors and um, you know, this stencil by the way came from Kindred Stamps. This was the Kindred Stamps stencil and I purposely, I wanted it to look like a, I don't know, an old loft. So I'll trim off the edges and um, I'm going to come up with something fun for that. So uh, 
check out my blog at Stamping Imperfection and you'll see. I haven't decided what I want to do, but it's definitely going to have florals and vines. Then um, the other thing is this this pro artist tape that I use to tape this down, when you remove it, you'll need to um, peel it back on itself. So grab an end and then peel it like this back on itself and it won't rip your paper. That's one little tip by the way. So you just peel it a little bit and then pull it back on itself. Oops, that one ripped because it's stuck. It's really stuck in that goop. But if you pull back away from your project, although when you have it glued down, there you go. There. All right, and then these I can just trim off, slide along the edge. I'm using my Tim Holtz um, nonstick scissors. just trimming off the edge and this one I'm definitely I have a sunny studio stamp set that will be absolutely perfect for this little design and that's that that's going to create a background for a card now one other thing um, I did it on my mat here and you'll notice now to clean up my stencil um, I just cleaned it off with a baby wipe and a wet washcloth. Um, even better if you could run it under the sink, but I didn't want to run it in my kitchen sink or my bathroom sink because they're kind of nice sinks. So this, by the way, um, now I have parts stuck on here, and I really need this to come off. But this is not a this is a thick plastic palette knife, but it just peels off, and I figured if if the palette knife didn't work, if I had a metal palette knife it would probably work better. I've got my um, Tim Holtz craft knife, I can just scrape it off with that. But a, a palette knife or something pointy actually really works well. And it does just peel off because I don't want to have a texture on this. I do a lot of techniques on this board. I don't mind stains but I can't have raised dried paste, but it does just come right off. Look at that, see? So, um, actually it comes off better with my fingernail. So to finish off this card, I pulled out my tonic trimmer and I'm just cutting off at like a quarter of an inch on each side. It actually ends up being five wide. So I want to trim off um, enough on uh, in the other direction so that I have a card piece that's three and three quarters by five because that will work nicely with my the dimensions of the card front and I really love this I, I am so surprised how flexible that texture paste is and um, it really feels like this would mail fine the last time I used it when I used the embossing paste um, from Stampin' Up! I used the shimmery white embossing paste and added some ink to it and um, I used a rock stencil so it came out brown. It looked really nice but I could never mail it. I don't know whether I got it on too thick because it was the first time I ever um, used an embossing paste but this texture paste really is very flexible and the other stuff I used I don't know whether, like I said, because it's too thick, it looks like it's going to crack if I send it through the mail. So I took the sending um, sentiment from the Sunny Studios Sunny Sentiment stamp set, and I heat embossed it in white on black cardstock and then cut it down. And I needed to touch up a couple spots with my white gel pen. I also have a, the this sunshine word dye that I got from Sunny Studios, I actually got that free during one of their promotions over the holidays. So I really love that I got the word sunshine. Um, I die cut that in that black craft foam with um, the Sizzix double-sided sticky sheet on the back 
and um, I also cut it out of black cardstock, which I'll add later. That also has the um, the correct or the uh, Sizzix double-sided sticky tape. Now I'm just using my Copic markers, and I'm going to do a real simple, simple Copic coloring here. And I've taken YR15, and I'm just adding. It's like a a yellow red, so it's pretty orangey. It's like a yellow orange color, and I really like it a lot. So I'm just doing that at the base of all the rays and around the inside of the sun circle. Now I'm taking Y17 and I'm kind of flicking out from each of the rays and then I'm just picking one direction to be horizontal here on the sun and I'm going to flick from the sides toward the center. I'm trying to, I'm working on leaving white space here when I use my Copic markers. It's one of the things I really have to work on. So now I'm taking um, Y15, and I'm going to flick a little bit more toward the center, still attempting to leave some white space in the center. And then I'm taking my lightest color, which is Y11, and I'm going to just fill the rest of that in. And it kind of takes care of the lines pretty nicely, like I felt like it blended really well. And I'm going to use that same Y11 um, pale yellow marker and flick and fill in the rest of those rays. So I get some variation in color, that it's darker toward the um, circle outline there and lighter in the center of the circle and lighter at the tips of the rays. So I like that. And there's a coordinating die set that goes with the stamp set. So I'm gonna pull out my Altenew Mini um, Blossom die cut machine. Love, love, love this. Worth every penny that I paid for it. Um, and you can see it's very well loved because I've used those plates a lot. So I'm just clipping the um, the die that I need. And those wire cutters I got from MFT Stamps, I had a lot of trouble finding wire cutters with a fine enough tip. I did manage to find those at MFT Stamps and I also found a pair on Amazon. So I keep that pair um, on my desk so I can use it with this mini blossom die cutter and I have a pair over by my big shot station on the other side of the room for when I have to do like larger die cuts or I want to do special techniques or something. So that comes out super simple. That's another element that's done and um, there's a cute little face stamp which I'm forgetting about at the moment but I will remember in a minute. So I'm just going to move things and try to put them out of the way there. and. Um, I'm going to pull out, Sunny Studios has the prettiest 6x6 um, six six pattern paper stacks and they have a fun variety of patterns. They just came out with four spring sets and I just really love them. They're just beautiful. So I'm putting some foam tape on the back of that. That's um, quarter inch foam tape and I'm putting it right to the edge of that mat above the um, sunshine die cut and I'm pulling out a piece of yellow because I don't know I wish I'd flip that paper over a little slower so I paid attention to the gorgeous colorful hearts on the back because that might have been pretty too but I'm picking that radiating pattern there that they have on this particular set and um, I'm pulling out my before I put everything together, I'm pulling out my Altenew um, Permanent Black Ink. This is my favorite Permanent Black Ink, and I'm just adding the face to that sun because it's too cute not to. And I'm going to, um, I've got my card base. My card base is just white cardstock cut at four and a quarter by 11. I scored it at five and a half, and I still have to add that word die to the top. So I'm just gonna poke that out and I'm going to add it to the top. It's already got the sticky stuff on the back of most of it. And I'm trying to remember to, po to poke out that little dot above the eye, which has an odd name to it, and I can never remember. And there's my hair in the way. What is going on with that hair? That's just crazy hair. It's like sticking up there. I have really short hair, so it's amazing that my hair is sticking up like that. Okay, so I'm just adding the um, the cardstock word on top. I really like that two-sided sticky tape. 
It, I feel like I make less of a mess with that than I do with liquid glue. I am going to use a dot of liquid glue because there's no way I'm getting off the paper from that little dot above the eye. And the S didn't, the, my sticky paper wasn't quite long enough for the whole word, so I just needed to add a little glue there. To the top of the, or to the bottom side of the S. And I'm thinking about this because that, that texture paste with the crayon color actually really came out super glossy. It's so pretty. You can't see the gloss here, but um, I was really delightfully surprised at how glossy that was. So I'm adding some more of this foam tape. And this is a new kind of foam tape I'm trying out. This is not the 3M foam tape. And I don't love this as much as, I really like the 3M foam tape because it's firm. This is super foamy. And I'm thinking if I send this in the mail, it's really going to squish this foam down. Um, so I'm trying to get as much of the back of that sun as I can. And so it doesn't like, I don't know, um, like bend or anything if I do decide to send this in the mail as opposed to putting it in a box full of stuff and sending it. And um, so I'm just going to attach that to the center of the um, stencil. And I really love that stencil. Isn't that fantastic? Um, I am really, and th this is another problem I'm having with this foam tape. I cannot get that backing. So when I do finally get it off, I stick it in the center. Works perfectly there. So I'm going to trim down that patterned paper. And I'm not paying any attention to where that circle is because it's, it's in the middle of that 6x6 six six paper. I'm not going to attempt to line it up. Um, and I cut that, by the way, at four by five and a quarter. So I have a quarter of an inch of that bright yellow fun color around that blue. And I really like them together. And I'm going to add some um, adhesive to the back of this. And I'm realizing that my adhesive isn't very, um, it's getting toward the end, so I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to make sure this sticks. I really want this to stick. I'm just going to center it on that patterned paper, and then I'm going to do the same thing. Now I flip this over and realize those hearts are gorgeous. That might have looked pretty around the edge, too. What was I thinking? Rainbows are always wonderful. So I'll just center this on top of this piece, and then I have two other touches I want to add. So I'm going to add some of these fantastic enamel dots from Altenew. This is called the Pocket Full of Sunshine set. I love this yellow. And I'm just going to add, I, what I, and one of the things I really like about this set, they already have adhesive on the back, but I like that you get three different sizes and then you get some stars and hearts on the side. I probably will use the stars and hearts a lot less than I'll use these um, little dots. I really like little dots, droplets and dots. And I'm just trying to add a variety of sizes and I'm sort of trying to add them in triangle patterns. So I'm going to make two triangle patterns here and I'm sort of trying to point that out to you. And I really like the way this is looking. It's just a fun card. I'm going to send it to my daughter. She lives in Michigan. And she's in her last year of grad school finishing up um, her PhD and she's applying for jobs and you know she could use a little sunshine right now I bet so I am going to send her this card. The last thing I want to add it, it needs some sparkle so I've got this aqua shimmer this Nouveau aqua shimmer pen and um, I should have shaken it a little more and I'm just squeezing it to get it to go down and I squeezed an awful lot so I'm just going to paint this onto the sunshine and I'm going to paint it onto the sun face and this card is going to have a lot of sparkle and a lot of shine because that gloss on the um, texture paste, I like. I will definitely be using this Ranger texture paste again. I like how flexible it is. I like how shiny it is. So that's going to actually complete this card. And thank you so much for watching. I'll put out the link to everything below here. Stop by my blog at stampingimperfection.com. Please give this video a like and share with your friends. 
and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I don't know why I'm cleaning up so much before I'm showing you the card. Um, I guess I'm really developing good habits here. I'll hold up the card in a minute, I promise. But super fun technique. Those crayons are fun to play with. And thank you so much for watching. StampingImperfection.com Have a great day.